Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Everyone, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm more than excited. I'm actually overwhelmed just to be here on today. Uh, I want to remind you of a familiar scripture uh, in the Bible, and it's, it's about the love that God has for us. And it comes from the book of John, chapter 3. Most of you may know it, and some of you should. And it reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And uh, I don't know about you, but for me, that's good news. We come this morning just thanking God for all that he's done for us and for his greatest gift uh, to mankind, his son Jesus. We're grateful and I'm glad that you came out this morning. I'm glad for everyone that's tuned in online for this sunrise service. In spite of the rain, uh, you chose to come out and we're glad to see you here in the sanctuary this morning. So, uh, Please join me if you can and stand to your feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. God, we love you. We magnify your holy name. You're worthy of our praise, honor, and glory. And we just thank you on today, God, for today. Father, we acknowledge your sovereignty, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, you are the first and the last. You are God Almighty, and you are God all by yourself. We're grateful for that, God, and we don't take it for granted that you chose us uh, years ago, God, and we thank you for choosing us on today, uh, that you woke us up one more time, God. You allowed us to come out to the house of worship, Lord, that we might hear a word from on high. God, we're grateful beyond measure, and we don't take it lightly that we're here today, assembled together, Lord, on one accord, to honor you, Lord, and celebrate your son, Jesus. Father, we acknowledge our sins this morning, Father, and ask that you would just forgive us for every sin that we have committed by word, thought, or deed, God. We ask that you would just have mercy on us right now, in the name of Jesus. God, we know that we haven't been so good or so perfect or even so kind that we would deserve your grace and your mercy. But yet, here we are, yet alive on this day that you have made, Father, and we're grateful. We stand here at your throne of grace and mercy to say thank you, Father. We thank you for choosing to give us life, God. We know that you have plans for our life, Lord, that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So we're grateful. We're asking that you would have your way in this service on today, Lord. We're blessing the speaker, God, with, with the word from you, God, that would touch us, God, that would convict us, God, that would challenge us to change our ways, Lord, to turn from our wicked ways, to turn our back on sin, God. We're asking that you would give us a mind to lay aside the sins that so easily beset us, God, that keep us from our relationship with you. We're asking that we would lay down those places that we shouldn't be going to, Father, on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, help us to make it up in our mind that we would move away from some people that we have no business being around, oh God. Help us to make up our mind to follow the cloud and not the crowd, oh God, on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, we love you and we want to do your will. The spirit is willing, God, but the flesh is weak, so we're calling on your name this morning, Lord, and we thank you yet again for your son, Jesus, the good shepherd. Lord, we acknowledge his ultimate sacrifice on our behalf, God. He paid a sin debt that he did not owe, God, he came down here on earth in the form of a man. He was tempted, Lord, just as we are from day to day. And yet, he did not sin. 
So we acknowledge the sacrifice that Jesus made for our lives, God. We acknowledge that by him redeeming us, God, that we have hope because we know that there is hope in Christ Jesus. We're praying that someone on today, God, would seek your face and not your hand, that they would call on your name, God, that they would seek you out while there is yet time. Oh, God, we're grateful. Have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy on us, Father. And as we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, let us be reminded that it's never about a bunny, but it's always about the lamb. Glory to the lamb. Glory to the lamb. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, have your way in this place, and we pray that your will, not our will, be done. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. He is the Alpha and the Omega, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Oh,
he knew and he could feel what was getting ready to happen to him but he did it for me if you see my plays that I do you see that I really don't focus on the agony and the torture but I still know that that's what he went through this morning I would like for you just to stand for the Lord it's not for me Stand and just worship him because he's worthy of it. Seated in majesty, you are the living king. Come on and say,
How are we this morning? Blessed. Amen. Amen. Whew. Okay, before I continue, I want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Some of you may be aware of an accident that occurred with my father yesterday. And while we are not going into any details at this time, I want to express to all of you that my father is doing well. He is okay. He is laughing, being his good, silly self, and is recovering. Thank you all for your prayers and concerns and trust and believe that the shepherd of this house will be back soon and in good health. Amen. And until his return, as his daughter, I give so much of my father and ask for so little in return, but this I am asking, please limit your text and phone calls so that he can fully recover and get the rest that the doctors say he needs to get so that he can come back and continue to do God's work. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. thank you. Okay, well now that's out the way. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. And if I am back, that means it's another installment of the PK's Word. Happy Easter, everybody. Thank you. Yes, yes, Resurrection Day. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here so early. I made it here barely, but we are all here at 6 a.m. Thank you, thank you. I just come to bring a couple of announcements for you this morning. I know it's early, but go ahead and tag, text, telephone, let your friends and family know that we are live and declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing that Jesus rose for you and I today. Amen? Amen. I would also like to thank our first time visitors, whether that's online or here in sight. We thank you and appreciate you for being here and for worshiping with us today. On last Sunday, we had our masquerade dinner and murder mystery. Go ahead and give a round of applause for that. Thank you all who attended, who supported, who donated for the good cause. And special shout out to my family. What was y'all team name again? Okay, Team PMS, okay? For solving the mystery that Elder Lynette Harris was the murderer, y'all. The murderer. <laughs> But again, we thank you all so much for turning out, and it was all in good fellowship and fun, amen? In lieu of ancestry, ancestry prayer tomorrow, we are asking that you all just take a moment throughout your day to just thank God, to pray for your friends, your family, whatever you may need prayer for, okay? And then on Wednesday, my dad will be back for weekly Bible study, um, Wednesday, April the 3rd at 7 p.m. via Zoom. This Sunday, we have our community giveaway. It is at 8 a.m., so if you know anyone who is in need of anything, tell them to come on out. We will be here with smiles at 8 a.m. We also have Easter baskets available after service for children 12 and under, 12 and under. And for the kids at heart, there is a basket of candies that you can grab. That is all I have for you today. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Thank you. Go ahead and put your hands together if you're happy that you woke up this morning. Come on, y'all. Y'all do better than that. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Say, y'all, that on Friday, on Friday, he went down. On Saturday, he rest. But on Sunday, he got up. If you're excited and ready to celebrate and praise him for getting up, Put your hands together one more time and show the Lord and give us the praise. Amen, amen. But now is the time that we all can participate. We all can participate. It's giving time, amen. Okay, I'll try it again. This is, come on, really back in. This is a time that we all can participate. It's giving time, amen. Understand that he gave his life. He gave his life. So now is the time that we should be excited to give back into him. This is holy ground that you guys are sitting in or standing on. Amen? This is a time that we all can participate. And we, we ask, some of us, we, we might have forgotten that you might not sow your seed for the year. Some of us might uh, 
uh, received an unannounced, a breakthrough, a blessing. So now is the time for you to give back unto the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for blessing me. I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for sowing and giving me everything that I need that I'm not lacking anything. Some of us, the fact that we woke up this morning, you should be ready to give unto the Lord. Amen? So as you prepare your offering, we have several ways. We have Givelify. We have a cash app. We have uh, the baskets that's uh, going around with the usher. So as you prepare your offering, make sure that you put and think before you give. Before you give, just think about the goodness of the Lord. Just think about the goodness of the Lord, how he's just continued to bless you. You was driving on the highway here in the rain safely in a car that operated that did not break down and did not have any problems. Just for that, you should be sowing a seed. Amen? Amen? Some of us want to put gas. You, you, if you look on your app and open up your bank app, you got more than enough. You should be giving because of that. Amen? Those that's online, make sure that you sow your seed. Sow your seed or whatever. So can we put up on the screen the cash app? I believe it's a new cash app. Make sure we want to put that up. Givelify, cash out, make sure that you put Family of Faith Christian Center, make sure you do your tithes and offerings, and as Pastor would ask, give a dollar more. So it was in my spirit, I, I, God spoke to me, he said the number three. So for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, so give three more of what you was going to give. So if it was $5, 5 dollars 5 10 15 If it was a dollar, one, two, three. If it was 100 100 200 300 Amen. <laughs> Amen. So let's play some good giving music. Come on, man, y'all. What well, we is up this morning. It is Resurrection Sunday. Y'all better be thankful for today. I know I am, boy. Amen. All right, let's do our declaration. I am a tither and a giver. I'm blessed beyond measures. I have more than enough. I am living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3 and 20. For how long? The rest of my life. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for every giver. We thank you for everyone that has given online. That God bless the offerings, God, the tithing. God bless everything that was given into this house, God, that it will be used for kingdom work, Father God. And bless those that was not able to give on this time, Father God. And we love you. We thank you for all that you do, what you continue to do, and what has already been done. So bless everyone in this house underneath the sound of my voice. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. says just for me Jesus came and did it just for me
Hallelujah. Come on, I said put your hands for the Lord. Now when you come to 6 a.m. service, you a different kind of believer. You a different kind of dedicated. You a different kind of sold out. You a different kind of in love with God. You a different kind of I'm doing things differently. I'm getting up early. I done stayed up late for so much stuff. Today I'm getting up early for Jesus because if he could get up for me, I could get up for him. Somebody say, I got up early. I got up early. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we thank you right now because you did get up, God. We got up, God. We sacrificed and we pressed and we pushed, God. And we say we know we're used to coming to church later, but this year we decided that we're going to do more in 24. This year we decided I'm getting up because I need some stuff that Mary got at the tomb. I, I need some stuff that you give before the sun comes up. I need some power this morning, God, that people who come at the midnight hour don't get. I want to be the first one to see you. I want to be the first one to feel you. So fill me with your resurrection power right here and right now. Let me have power when I go back home. Let me have power when I show up at work. Let me have power when I deal with my spouse. Power when I deal with my kid. I want power to be single. Power to talk right. Power to walk right. I got up early because I want power. And so, God, we pray right now that you would touch this sanctuary, God, not just with regular Sunday power, but with resurrection, tomb opening, angels rolling it, God, the angels singing, the shepherds running, God. We want that kind of power, God. We want the Shekinah glory to rest on us, God. God, it's not Pentecost, but we want tongues of fire. Because since we are post-Pentecost, we got a right to claim those tongues of fire any day, any time. So we claim them here and we claim them now. And the same power that you put on here, God, put on our bishop. God, restore his body, God, and let your angels keep him, God. Let your angels surround him, God. I thank you for the assignment here, God. I'm not visiting, I'm home. I'm not visiting, I'm home. And so God, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for your keeping power through the blood of our Savior, the Lamb of God. Nails didn't keep him on the cross, love did. Hmm. Roman guard didn't keep him in the tomb, love did. And it was nothing but love that got him up. So teach us, God, what we've never seen. Let the arrogant humble themselves under your mighty hand, God. 
We pray it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Come on, amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank the Lord today. I am Pastor Dawn and I am home. Y'all can have a seat real quick. I am not visiting. I am home. Ain't that right, lady? And so I thank the Lord that I'm here. I live almost two hours away. So do y'all know what time you got to get up when you live near Temecula to get to Long Beach in a rainstorm? Come and say that one more time. Not in clear weather, but in a rainstorm. But when you love God, Come on, somebody. When God asks you to get up and do more than you done did before, when God said you didn't know you was going to get up, but I got something for you, and I bet you you're going to get up and you're going to get there all right. Bishop called me 15 minutes ago. He said, you ready? I said, I'm as ready as ready can be. He said, where you at? I said, I'm on the 60, getting on the 91, getting on something else, getting on something else, getting on something else. Came from the 215, went around this puddle and around this truck. Now, normally, I am a woman that lives alone. And so normally getting this assignment at 6 o'clock in the morning, I would have been figuring that thing out alone. But wouldn't you know that my son, my wonderful son, my orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Angelo Smith, is here in the back with me to drive me here today. I'm gonna say that one more time. I said orthopedic surgeon, he not a felon. Come on somebody, I'm not visiting him behind bars. Come on somebody, I'm not tapping on the glass. Come on somebody, they not patting me down to visit him. Come on somebody. I said, it's a black man that went to school to be an orthopedic surgeon that takes the life of maybe your loved one in his hand and he's here long enough to drive his mama here on Resurrection Sunday. Now, I ain't saying he couldn't have been in jail because God knows if it had not been for the grace of God. And those of you who know my children know that he is one of two because it is twins. Jesus. Uh-uh, don't say all right yet. <laughs> Somebody say pray. Then I have a third son that is a United States Marine. Somebody say pray. pray. And then I have a fourth child that is just fresh from Japan on yesterday. She is at Columbia University. Somebody say pray. pray. So when I come to talk to you about what I'm talking to you about, somebody say she know what she's talking about. Come on, she know what she's talking about. Listen. When you get the assignment to preach on Easter, you typically want to say, what will I say that will be different? How many of you have heard Easter messages more than 10 times? More than 20? More than 30? More than 40? 40 Easters, 50 Easters. Come on, I got 60 Easters. I got 70 Easters. Anybody with 80 Easter's in the house? 80, e come on mama, 80 Easter's in the house. Anybody with 90 Easter's in the house, anybody? All right, 80 Easter's got up at 6 a.m. Mama, you better show them how to do it. You better show them how to do it. You better show them how to do it. When you have heard 80 Easter's, what would I say to you, mother, that you haven't heard? How do I reach you in the giraffe level of faith that you are at and then reach the one who is here hearing Easter for the very first time? Everybody say, everybody know Easter. No, everybody don't know Easter. We didn't change the name 15 times. When I grew up, it was Easter. Then we got black and then we became African American and it became Resurrection Sunday. And then every time you said Easter, somebody looked at you, Minister Ty, like you wasn't holy. So I came in my old Negro spiritual kind of way to tell you I still call it Easter. And I don't care what you call it, did he get up for you? Come on, Sharisa tell you, Sharice, wave your hand back in the back. Sharisa tell you when I when she answered the no. At first I said it to you, Ty. First thing I said when you answered the phone was, he got up. 
because everybody want to have a title. So when you meet people the rest of this day, as soon as you meet them, say, he got up. Somebody shout, he got up. When you're looking for something to expound upon, to teach, to lecture, to say, I'm going to give a topical sermon. I'm going to give you three points and a close. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to give you an expository sermon. You feel me, hey, Tone? I'm going to come in a way first person. When I come in here today, I'm going to act like I'm Mary of Magdalene, the first one at the tomb, and I'm going to absolutely make you think that you back in biblical time. But mother has seen it, been there, done that. The majority of you in the room said, I'm at least 30 Easter's in. Come on, I'm at least 30 Easter's in. So what phrases and what thoughts and what thesis, how you going to dice it and slice it and give it to me so that Easter is different? I was talking to some preachers yesterday, and I had some people tell me, oh, no, I just pulled up something I already preached. Say that again. Come on, come on, Pastor. Say that again. Uh-oh. I just pulled up something and put a new spin on it. What if God wants preachers to preach something you never saw? What if God wants you to dig so deep in the scripture that you dig so deep to you say, I never saw that. He says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Somebody say of power. Hmm. He said, I want you, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians 1. Somebody say, that girl, go quick. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. I so desperately wanted to come from Matthew 28. I so deeply wanted to come from Mark 15. I definitely wanted to come from Luke 24. And I really was wrapped up in John 20. And God said, that's not where I am in 2024 for Easter. He said, I'm in Ephesians chapter 1 because something tells me you know about the tomb, you know about the cross, you know about the nails, and you know about the crown, and you know about the soldiers, and you know about the disciples. Maybe you know who was there and you know who wasn't there. But maybe there's something that was said outside of the four Gospels. Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 17, says, I keep asking that God, you can stand on your feet to honor the word of the Lord. Now, mother then set the tone. 80 Easter's in and stood up. So if 80 Easter's in and stood up, come on, somebody. Now, the last time I was here, I had to sit down. Y'all remember that? I had to sit down and preach. I had to wear my little flats. Now, they may come out. Christy is over there, and she's ready. Because I am having back surgery in three weeks. Because I have been on a walker for exactly five months. And I'm telling y'all, when Holy Week started, I didn't need my walker. I started preaching last week on Palm Sunday that I am the donkey that he rode into town on. You go ahead and be the Pharisee, and you go ahead and be the Sadducee, and you go ahead and be the one waving the palm branches. But I found out, as the King James Version say, that I was the ass that he said, go untie, and he rode into town on me. And as Jesus mounted up on my back to ride into my life, he said, I don't think you need the walker, because if I ride on you, you can stand on me. I said, God, but my back's still messed up. He said, do you believe? Because I'm about to give you a power. I said, well, wait a minute, God. I ain't wore a little heel in about four years now. I got up this morning and I said, Sean, pull out your little kitten heel. You're not going to need your little flats today because I feel some resurrection power. So on Monday, I had to preach that he cleansed the temple, so I shouted, Lord, cleanse me. Somebody shout, Lord, cleanse me. On Tuesday, he said, don't be fake. He said, don't be a whitewashed tomb filled with dead men's bones. Come on, somebody. On Wednesday, he was silent. Somebody say, silent Wednesday. He didn't say a mumbling word. Can you trust God when he says nothing to you? Are you the type to cut and run if you pray and you don't hear anything? We have mastered that I don't walk, I walk by faith and not by sight. But can you walk when there's no hearing? Somebody say, be silent. On Thursday was the day of the betrayal. Anybody ever been betrayed by somebody who walked right up to you and kissed you? 
Come on, anybody ever said, I thought you was on my side? And you the one that led the people that don't love me right to me? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It was a day of betrayal. They snatched him out of the garden. But was he caught off guard? Because didn't he tell Judas at the Last Supper that what you about to do, go and do quickly? He might as well have said, see you in the garden. On Good Friday, y'all have a seat because y'all see I'm going to be a minute. We got a breakfast to get to, so we're going to get to the breakfast. We're going to get to the 9 a.m. But it's no way I can just rush through Good Friday. Come on, somebody. On Good Friday, I had to preach for a seminary in the morning, Gigi. They had the three preachers. One preached the crucifixion, one preached the burial, one preached the resurrection. I said, well, God, give me the crucifixion or the resurrection. I know it inside out, Christy. I could preach that in my sleep. They said, boop, you got the burial. What am I going to say, minister, about the burial? They going to wear me out on the crucifixion. They're going to take us home and make us dance on the resurrection. What am I going to say about the burial? He said, don't you understand that it was a plan that I had Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus come and get my body? I want you to think about that for a minute. He didn't have Peter come. Come on, somebody. He didn't have John come. He had somebody who was in the Sanhedrin come and take his body down off the cross. Be careful who you push away because you say, I don't like them. What if they the one who catch you at your worst state? What if they the one that'll carry you and put you on your back? And you so busy calling them all kind of bees and hoes that you think that they not on your side. You so busy saying, I don't like my baby's mama and I don't like my baby's daddy. But what if they the one to take you down from the cross that life put you on? They the one to clean your wounds, Lady Gigi. They the one to take the thorns out your mind. Not out your head, out your mind. The Bible says in Isaiah that he was disfigured to the point that he didn't look human, Sean. And Joseph of Arimathea said, I got it. Somebody say, I got Jesus. Hmm. The women followed them to the tomb and watched the place where they laid him. So when people say the women were confused on Sunday morning, if I saw where they laid him on Friday, am I confused, Christy, on Sunday? The Romans said they went to the wrong tomb. Mm -mm, the Bible said the women were there and watched. Somebody say, I saw it. On Friday afternoon, I had to lay my cousin to rest. My cousin called the ambulance for himself. They intubated him, and he went home to be with the Lord. I said, so, Lord, you want me to preach at 9 a.m., do a funeral at 12, and then at 6, the seven last words. And I was word number seven. I had nothing left, Sean. What am I going to say? I'm tired. He said, your word is, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Lord, I'm sick of the seven last words. I want somebody to preach something different. I want somebody to make Good Friday different. I want somebody to come different. He said, well, when you preach it, he said, I want you to start with the fact that I'm your father because everybody who hear the seven last words don't think of me as father. Some just think of me as God. What? Ain't that the same thing? Mm -mm. You call him God and I call him Abba. I'm looking at you side eye. Come on, somebody. The disciple said, teach us to pray. And all of a sudden, he didn't say call him Jehovah Jireh. He didn't say call him El Shaddai. He didn't say call him Yahweh. He said, when you pray, say our. What would make you come to Easter and not know him as Father? I wanted to start so bad with Sunday morning. He said, but what if they never got through Good Friday? What if they still back in the place where they believe the lie that I went to hell when I got in the tomb? What? What are you talking about? 
talking about lie. Find me a scripture. I'll wait. Find me a scripture that says when Jesus died on Friday, that he went to hell. Find me a scripture that when he said it is finished, it wasn't. Find me a scripture that said that he had to go and fight with the devil and take back the keys to death and the grave. I heard it preach, but find me a scripture. They're going to take you to 1 Peter, and they're going to say, this meant that when he went down there and preached, when did it say he did that from the grave? So if I believe that the only time that he could have went to hell to preach, and I make that just from Good Friday all the way to Easter Monday, then that means that I believe that Jesus did not start to Christmas. Let me say that one more time. There is no Old Testament Jesus, because if I have a sign that the only time that he could have went to hell was in the 33 years that he lived, hmm, but the problem with that, that the Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, so who was the word that was made flesh? If that was Jesus all the way back in Genesis, didn't he have time somewhere between Genesis and Malachi, somewhere between Matthew and Revelation, how dare we with our arrogance say the only time that he could have went to hell was when he died on the cross. And he said, to make sure that y'all know where I'm going, I'm going to say to the thief that's hanging on the cross to me, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Did he tell him, Christy, you go to heaven and I'll see you in three days? Did he tell him, Sean, I got some business because, you know, that blood that I put on the cross wasn't enough. When we preach that he had to go to hell to fight, when we believe it, it means we don't believe in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. And we are emptying the cross of its power. God said, when you get there today, tell the people about the power of the resurrection. I said, God, that don't, that's not what you want me to preach. I preached that last year, Ty. The name of the sermon was Power of the Resurrection. He said, no, you heard me. He said, but you did twist it around. I said, what? He said, you twisted it around. I didn't tell you this year to preach on the power of the, the, resurre- the, power of the resurrection. He said, because the problem is when people buried me, they buried my power. Ah. What? He said, y'all keep saying that he got up with what? Got up with all power. I said, God, what do you mean we resurrected? He said, y'all killed it. I said, what do you mean we killed it? He said, when you begin to say that I got up with all power, what did I die with? I said, what? What? He said, then you saying that I died with some power. So when I spoke to the winds, and I spoke to the rain, and they said, what manner of man is this, that even the oceans and the winds and the sea would obey him? He said, what kind of power did I have then? So I said, wait a minute. How many times have I had heard then I said how many times have I said he got up with all power he said didn't I die with all power he said after it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was was God he said he made everything and there was nothing that was made that was not made by him he said do you think when I was forming the sun and the moon the stars and the galaxies He said, do you not think I had all power? So for you to say that I did not get all power until Resurrection Sunday is an arrogance of the preaching you have heard and the person that preached it, and you're more committed to them than you are the truth of the Scripture. I'm going to say it one more time because y'all didn't hear it, so let me give it to you. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power. In Ephesians chapter 1, he said, I keep asking God, the, the, Lord, the, the God of our Lord Jesus and the glorious Father, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Somebody say, give me wisdom, God. 
give me revelation, God. Now, on our way here, you know, young people, Lady Gigi, they'll listen to anybody on the radio. So my son had his radio on, and I didn't ask him what the man's name was. I said, that man is a blazing lie right here from the pit of hell. Because he said that if God is doing this, he is horrible. And if God is doing that, he is horrible. And I said, son, what is this man basing his opinion on? He said, mama, what are you basing your opinion on? I said, the truth. He said, this man quote the Bible all the time. I said, so did Pharisees. So did Sadducees. Come on, somebody. I said, don't let somebody bring in you some word that don't live word. I said, the only way somebody can break down Bible to you is they got the Holy Spirit in them. And if they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, then everything they read is foolishness to them. And when it comes out, it comes out sounding like foolishness. Ask Puff Daddy. Lord Jesus, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But not just wisdom for wisdom's sake. Look at what he says in verse 17. He says, so that you may know him better. I said, wait a minute. He talking to people that already accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What does he mean I want you to know him better? Could it be that when we come to the front row or come to the altar and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't know him like you need to know him? Could it be that you could be 80 Easter's in and still need to know him better? He said, verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Somebody say, open up your heart. See, what we do when we hear a word, Minister Ty, that we say that's contrary to what I heard all my good Baptist life. I'm a Baptist girl, born and raised in Detroit, and all I ever heard was the grave. You know, he died one Friday, and he got up on Sunday morning. And I heard over and over again that he got up with all power. So this paradigm shift for me, Sean, was very hard. And God said, who will you be loyal to? Now listen, let me say this to you. I only got a few more minutes, so let me say this to you. You're going to have to study this to show yourself approved. You're going to have to dig down. The Bible says the Bereans were of more noble character because they searched the scriptures to see if what Paul said was true. If you just listen to every fool that put a mic in their hand, to everybody that pushed go live, to everybody on TikTok and everybody on Instagram and everybody on Facebook and everybody that come on your radio and everybody that do a podcast, you of all men are to be pitied. Because as a man thinketh, somebody say, watch my mind. He said, but not just your mind. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Listen to why he said, why? He said, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I said, God, I know about hope. You know, I know about hope. I know about hope. Everything I've been going through couldn't make it without hope. He said, okay, that's not where I want you to preach. Keep going. He said, he said, not only know the hope, but I want you to know the riches, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. I said, God, I know about his glory. I know that the inheritance is the Holy Spirit deep down inside of me. And that when I close my eyes on this side, I'm going to open. That's my inheritance that I am marked with the blood of Jesus and that no devil in hell can take it from me. That's my inheritance. But he said, no, 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 no. Where you going to rest is verse 19. Now we're going to start with the beginning of verse 18, and we're going to tie it to 19 so that this stands out. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know, drop down to verse 19, his incomparably great power for us who believe. He is talking to save people, saying, you don't know the power. You know enough to have gotten saved, but you don't know all that you need. See, there's, this, there's three, three, three places, three places we go when we give our life to Christ. We come to the front row, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and some people just accept him as Savior. Listen, I don't want to die, I don't want to go to hell. Those are the people who accept him as Savior. Somebody say Savior. Savior. Those people are saved. But you got to elevate from being saved to being serious. When you say he's not just my Savior, but he's my Lord and Savior, that means not my will, but your will be done. When you tell me don't go, I won't go. When you tell me get off my back, I'm getting off my back. When you tell me don't fight, I ain't going to fight. When you tell me shut your mouth, I ain't putting my mouth on it. 
Why? Because he's not just my savior, he's my Lord and savior. Oh, you only rise to the level of him being your Lord when you're serious. You got to go from being saved to being serious. So what is this level when you know the power? When somebody can say, I could whip you all night long and you not say a mumbling word. Everything don't deserve an answer. Some of y'all wore out 2024 ain't but five minutes long. And you woe out because you answer everybody. And the reason why you do is because you don't know the power. If I don't know my power, is it because I got his power twisted? So I thought his power was limited, and he didn't get it to Resurrection Day. So I think my power is limited. So I drink it, smoke it, pop it, roll it, cuss it, fuss it, do all that stuff, because I don't know my power. Could he say today to you, you have heard about the power of the resurrection, but it's time for you to resurrect the power. You killed it. You laid it in the grave because theologians, even the ones I talked to on yesterday, they said, well, so here was the thing. He laid in the grave, and this is why he got the power and got up with all power. When he laid in the grave as a human, he gave up the power. So he gave up the power. Everybody turn to John. Everybody turn to John. I want you to see this in John. I want you to see this in John. This is kind of like a preach, teach. So come on, y'all take it how I give it. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. He says, I lay down my life. John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. I lay down my life that I may take it up again. He said, no one takes it from me. But I lay it down of myself. He said, I have the power. Somebody say power. I have the power to lay it down. That means before he died on the cross, he had power. Then he says, and I have the power to take it up again. That means on Sunday morning, before he got himself up, he already had the power. How do you know that? Because he said, I had the power to lay it down and I got the power to take it up. Pastor Don, you're messing with my, my blackness right now. You're messing with my gospel right now. You're messing with my theology right now. Where'd you get it from? Because when God told me, search the scriptures to see if what you've heard pans out. And if I had power when I laid my life down on Friday, and I had power when I picked it up on Sunday, then I always had all power. And if you sit there now and doubt it, you have to ask yourself, based on what? The devil wants you to limit the power of God. The devil wants you to get in situations where you say, this is too big and this is too much. The devil wants you to get in the place where you say God is not powerful. He really did, Dr. Lee, give up his power. Yeah. Then if he gave up his power, Sean, when he laid in the grave, how did he get him and the thief to paradise? Just think about that. This day you will be with me in paradise. I'm getting you up now. But wait a minute, Jesus. I've been told you went to hell, and I've been told you didn't have all power, and I'm not understanding all of this. I'm all messed up in my little mind right now, God. He said, think about it. How could I take me to the presence of God? Pastor Don, I don't believe that because I believe he didn't get up until Sunday. He didn't get his body up until Sunday. What? When did God ever die? When is God ever not with power? So when he took his last breath, the Bible says he gave up his spirit. He gave up the ghost. When he took his last breath, did he go in the tomb? How do you know that? 
What word? To be absent is to be what? Why have we assigned that to every grandma and every granddaddy and everybody but not Jesus? Come on, somebody. We took Jesus' word and we put it on our daughters. I, I got to bury my daughter. And the only way I'm going to get through this, if I say to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. If I bury my daddy and bury my mama and bury my cousin, the only way I get through it is to say to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. But with Jesus, we said he went in the tomb. How did we get there? Were we singing and shouting so much that we didn't apply the word to the word? He said, I didn't go to heaven at the ascension. I went to heaven on Good Friday. <sighs> See how quiet the room got? Mine is blown. Because for 80 Easter's, We've been saying, he got up now, 40 days later is the ascension. 10 days later is Pentecost. But could it be that he said, did you miss that part again that I said? Everything he did on the cross, he meant it. I got to keep taking you back to the thief, Dr. Lee. This day, you will be with me. We have preached that scripture so much that we put the thief someplace that we didn't put Jesus. Somebody say, preach, girl. <laughs> Listen, how many of you ministers were in my class when I taught y'all how to preach? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Listen, it's hard to preach stuff that goes against what you heard. But you're going to stand between two opinions. And you're going to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve what you didn't always heard like a Pharisee and a Sadducee and say he saved others? Why can't he save himself? Are you going to be over here on this side and say you are the king of glory? You are the Lord of lords. You're not just the everlasting father. You're the mighty God. How dare me take something you called yourself in Isaiah and tell you that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke you didn't have mighty God power. Come on, somebody. The devil done got us so busy that we think this the only weekend to celebrate that he got up. We think that this is the only weekend that I go get a new outfit and I get myself together and I invite all my visitors. Come on, come on. We think this is the only time that we do it. He said, you need resurrection power every day of your life. He said, you need resurrection power to be married because there are times that you look at your spouse and you say, I want to cut your throat. But all of a sudden, resurrection power will raise up in you. There are times when your child will say stuff to you and you say, you're not going to jail but I might send you to hell today you need resurrection power to raise up in you there are times when you own your job and your boss treats you like you're nothing but you need resurrection power to rise up in you so God brought me here not to tell you about the power of the resurrection but to tell you it's time for you to resurrect your power what what if I'm stuck? He said, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, somebody say to us. So we got the skins and we got the shirts. Come on, somebody. The shirts need to cover themselves with everything they didn't ever heard preach. The, cut, the shirts need to cover themselves with the Apostles' Creed that don't line up with the Bible. The shirts need to cover themselves. You better make up your mind. I'm going to get naked and unashamed before God and wrap myself up in the Word of God. And I'm going to preach the truth. Boldly, I'm going to come to the throne. Boldly, I'm going to declare who he is. And whoever don't like it, I realize there's a us and there's a them. Yeah. 
He said, the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved. Do I have anybody being saved? Do I have anybody being saved? He said, for us who are being saved, what does that mean? Work out your salvation every day. What does that mean? Crucify your flesh every day. Every day you got to get up and deny yourself. Every day is Easter for you. Why? Because he said, every day put yourself on the cross. I got on it first so that you can have resurrection power right around 12 noon. So you can have resurrection power right around 1 p.m. And the reason why you don't have any power when you're at work and the reason why you don't have any power when you're at home is because you never crucified yourself. And you don't crucify you because you want the glory without the story. He says in 2 Peter, his divine power has granted us everything. Somebody say everything. everything. Pertaining to life and godliness. What? So if I don't know the power, I don't know life. If I don't know the power, I don't know godliness. Where are my single people at? Where are my single people? Single people? Raise your hand. Single people, raise your hand. Okay. In the midst of my singleness, you have all these people who say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I say, get thee behind me, Satan. One of the other boxes to check is 420 friendly. Call my daughter. What the heck is 420 friendly? Wow. <laughs> Am I the only one that was lost? I'm the only one. You know, I might be the only grandmother that didn't know what 420 friendly was. My daughter said 420 friendly mean they smoke weed and they smoke it all the time. And when they get with you, they're going to want you to smoke weed too. Somebody said when you become 420 friendly, you don't know the power. Because you think that if you roll it up and toss it up and smoke it up, you think that that's what's going to get you out. But I got news for you. You're going to get high, but you're going to come down. But there's a high that you can get in Jesus that is unparalleled. His parallel power is not parallel to anything you've ever seen. There's no brown liquor. There's no Hennessy mixed with a little bit of mar margarita. There's nothing that you can say that you can shake it and you can bake it. There's no fentanyl. There's no pill. There's no CBD. There's nothing that you can find that has the power of the Holy Ghost. How do I know that? Because when the power got on me, I wasn't me no more. He said, behold all these. What made me new? The power. What stopped me from being who I used to be? Somebody say the power. What stopped me from doing what I used to do? Somebody say the power. In my singleness, on my little profile that I got, yes, I have a Christian profile on a dating site. I'm one of the hottest ticket items on the site. <laughs> but see, when you all that in a bag of chip, you will attract anything. You will attract everything. And if you don't have the power of discernment, Come on, somebody. If you don't have the power of discernment, you'll put yourself with somebody that God never put you with. You got to look not with your eyes. You got to look with the eyes of God. And you got to say, mm -mm, let me tell y'all something. Swiping, I am a king, not a queen. I am a king. I swiped so quick. I said, nope, beat women. Nope, struggling with his sexuality. Nope, probably got a couple of felonies. Nope, don't take care of his kids. Nope, don't have a job. I, it's just something that the Holy Ghost will give you when you look at a person. And don't think that I only do it with dating. I look at women who say, I want to be your friend. I say, nope, you're messy. Nope, you got a double mind. Nope, you're lukewarm. Nope, the minute you come in my house, you're going to tell all my bitch. You need the power of the Holy Ghost, whether you picking a friend or whether you picking a a man. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. When you go and interview on the job, you have asked me all your questions. Now I got my own. I want to know how is this company going to benefit me? I want to know what's the rate of acceleration of promotion for a person with my pigment? I want to know, do you discriminate against women? I want to know how many people will be under my stand. I want to know when am I going to get a raise? I want to know. They'd be like, wait a minute, are you interviewing us? You better believe it because I got the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't save this for Easter morning. What a cheat of the power. What a fool you are. He told the two on the road of Emmaus, how do you be so foolish? They said, did we not burn when he spoke to us? 
Some of you hear this and it fell on rocky ground. Some of you hear this, go ahead and play brother. Some of you hear this and what you heard has choked it out of you. It's never gonna take root. You're never gonna study to look it up. You're never gonna rightly divide the word of God. Cause the little hood girl from Detroit came and told you some stuff that was in opposition with what you heard. But what if what you heard, they were misled? What if they were saying what they always heard from their pastor and their bishop? And they told you that Jesus went to hell not because they saw it in the Bible, but because they heard it at church. They told you that he got up with all power because they didn't believe that he died with all power. And if the enemy can use and twist Easter for decades and centuries, to this might be the first Easter that you don't hear that he got up with all power. I came here on assignment of the Holy Ghost to tell you he died with all power. I came here on assignment of the Holy Ghost to tell you he was born with all power. I came here on the assignment of the Holy Ghost to tell you that when he was walking through Jerusalem and they touched the hem of his garment, there was enough power in the hem of his garment, not after the cross, but before the cross. You want to know if he had power? Ask Lazarus. Come on. Lazarus said you could be in a dead situation and the power of the Holy Ghost will bring you back from the dead. Come on. You in a place where somebody didn't use you and abused you and beat you over and bent you over. Ask the woman that was bent over. She said there was some power in the Holy Ghost to the point where he said, woman, thou art loosed. He didn't wait to get power on Easter morning. He always had power. When the two fish and the five loaves fed the multitudes, he had power. When they tried to snatch him, the Bible said he disappeared from among them. And they were trying to take him. This is before the cross. When he said, go and get me a donkey. The donkey is in this village all the way over here tied up, hooked up, mother and child donkey. He all the way over there, but in his power, he see all the way over here. And you didn't let the devil make you think he didn't have all power until Sunday morning. When they beat him all night Thursday and he didn't say a mumbling word, it took power. When he took my cross and your cross and put it on his back and he said, I'm going to carry all the stuff you have done. I haven't done anything, but this is you. Father, let this cup pass by me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You mean I got to carry something that you did? And I got to carry something that you did. And I got to go and die and be beat and bruised and walk the Via De La Rosa. And I ain't never did nothing. Let me tell you something. It take power to let people do you wrong. It take power to let people hurt you. It take power to not say a mumbling word. When I got to the last word on Friday, and he said, Father, I commit my spirit into thy hands. I said, what if he was on a job? He said, prepare for me a body and restore to me the glory that I had with you before, before, before the foundation of the earth. Jesus wasn't killed. It wasn't a murder. It was a divine, sovereign suicide. No man took his life, but he laid it down. They came to break the bones in his legs, and they broke the bones of the thieves. And when they got to him, he had already given up the ghost. Jesus said, get a clue and get a revelation. 
Because if you don't understand my power, you will live weak. You will live ineffective. The devil will keep tripping you and trapping you and bamboozling you. And he'll use the very word of God to make you not preach it, to make you not teach it, and to make you not understand it. Choose ye this day. Are you going to be pitiful or are you going to be powerful? Stand on your feet. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, how we love you, God. God, how we honor you, God. God, there is nobody like you, God. God, I thank you that we have been redeemed and we have repented of emptying the cross of its power, God. God, I thank you right now that you have reminded us that you didn't get up with all power, but you died with all power because you came into Mary's womb under the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you came in the womb and you came out the womb and you laid in the manger in power, God, forgive us that we forgot you always been God. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And by your power, you created everything. And you had so much power that you looked at your disciples and said, I give you power over the enemy. God, I pray that we would resurrect our power today. That we would stop letting the enemy get the last word. That we would stop coming to Easter and Sunday after Sunday saying he got up with all power. Because if I don't think that you lived with it, then I will doubt if I can live with it. And so I love you for transforming me as you renewed my mind. Because the message of the cross is not based on words, but on power. And so if there's anybody here, God, that they didn't had a rough time, they didn't had a weak time, it's because they only know you partially. They see you dimly. They don't have the eyes of their heart open. They don't have the spirit of the wisdom and revelation to understand your mighty word. I pray that those who are workmen of the word will go home and work this word. That they will dig until they see you. They will dig until they can have Bible class with friends and nieces and nephews and grandchildren and sisters and brothers and explain the resurrected power of Jesus. We're not resurrecting it because power died, because power has never died. We're resurrecting it because we killed it by the way we believed it. Forgive us. Forgive us when we denied your power. We had a form of godliness, but we denied your power take us out of here and let this Easter be the shift. We could shout because we got something to shout about. Because one Friday you did die. You did suffer and you did bleed. No man took your life but you gave it up. You laid it down in power and you picked it up in power. We could celebrate and we could shout that. We could shout over Saturday and we can shout over Sunday. We can shout over the fact that you told Mary, go tell my brothers that I am risen. But God, this Easter had to be different. And so I thank you for the message of the cross and the power we got from it today. Now, God, save souls. Anybody here, God, that doesn't know you, that does not cry out to you, that does not wrap themselves up in your love and your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Anybody who doesn't know that though their sin may be red and scarlet, God, you will wash them in your blood. And so I pray that somebody in their heart right now is saying, Father, forgive me. I repent of my sin. I believe that you are the Lord Jesus, that you died and that God rose you from the grave. And God, I'm making you savior and so I'm saved, God. But I'm also ready to move to being serious, God. And after I'm saved and I'm serious and I got the power, I moved to the level of being sold out. 
God, let somebody get sold out today where they stop cussing when they leave here today. They stop lying when they leave here today. They are a better father and a better mother and a better sister and a better brother because of the power that was resurrected in them today. Now, if you are here and you need to give your life to the Lord, this is a wonderful time for you to come forward and say, I need that power because I'm out here living weak and I'm out here being defeated and I'm out here facing giants and I'm all over lion's dens and lion's dens are all over me and I, I need power if I'm going to survive what's really coming after me. I got a court case in front of me. I, I got a child on drugs. I, I, got, I got an addiction that I can't break. And the only way that I'm going to lay aside the sin and the weight is that I come and get that power. And so if you are here and you want to give your life to the Lord, I want you to just come down to the altar. Your way of saying to Jesus, give me the power. Give me the power. You say, Pastor Don, I'm just visiting and, 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 and I don't want to join the church. Listen, we just asking you to join the kingdom. Now they'll, they'll take you to the side and explain to you who the church is, but don't leave the way you came without power. I'm already a powerful man, and I'm already a powerful woman. Without God and apart from God, you can do nothing. But with God, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if everybody in the house is saved already, you already know where you're going. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want you to slip your hand in the air if you're already, already saved, already saved, already saved, already saved, already saved. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's give Pastor Don a hand clap of praise. That power. We thank God for waking us up with his power. Amen. Thank you all for coming this morning. Did you guys have a beautiful Sunday this morning? Touch your neighbor and say, I got the power. Touch your other neighbor and say, I got the power. Amen. Amen. We will be having breakfast in our fellowship hall and then we will be back at 9 a.m. Pastor Don also has books for fasting. If you are interested in purchasing a book about biblical fasting, this is also how you get power. We've been fasting, um, fasting in the Lent season. And if you want to dive into biblical fasting 101, I suggest you get this book as a guide. This will help you. Fasting is not just for a season. It's for a, a lifetime. We as Christians, as believers, we got to know how to get in his face. And we don't celebrate when fasting is over because fasting is a privilege to get in his face, to be able to put something aside so he, we can say that he is greater and he can do greater works in our life so we can get that power. So if you all can please Please stand up and I'll say a prayer and then hopefully I'll see some of your faces at nine. If not, may the Lord watch over you and keep you and have a beautiful week. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord, for your power, God. Thank you, Lord, for your resurrecting power, oh God, that it never loses us, God. Your blood never lost its power. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood that covers us today. I thank you, God, for the word that was spoken, God, the new revelation, God, of a resurrection Sunday word, God. We heard something something new, Lord, and something fresh, God. Let us hide it in our hearts, oh God, that we may not sin against you, oh God, that we may speak the truth, God, to others, God, not just what we heard, but God, what we saw in your word, Lord Jesus. Let us share the good news that you are Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior. God, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you, Lord, for covering our bishop, God, with your power, oh God. Heal him, God, with your power, oh God. Lord, restore him, God, with your power. We thank you for all things, and Lord, continue to be with us throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And happy birthday, Sharice. Everybody say happy birthday, Sharice. She had a birthday yesterday. Y'all have a good day.
from the Sunday school professor. That's all.